What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Big Baby Jonathan. Welcome to the latest edition of the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show. And in today's show, I'm going to be talking about Anthony Davis. Is this year he finally gets MVP? And how how is Kyle Kuzma going to impact the second unit? And who is a sleeper in the Eastern Conference? Now, let's start off by talking about is this the year for Anthony Davis to win MVP for the Lakers? I think it can be. I just feel like Anthony Davis just has to play at his best, at highest level. He's one of the best power. He's not one of the best. He is the best power forward in the game. He can set a screen, back to the basket, post up, fade away. He can shoot the three, play defense. And hit with LeBron on the Lakers now and Anthony Davis together, that combo can elevate. LeBron can elevate Anthony Davis's game. LeBron elevates everybody's game around him. So we're going to have to see what Anthony Davis really does um, on this team. And I really think he can be an MVP candidate this year. And I know his thumb injury um, is a grade one sprain. He's supposed he is getting MRIs today. We'll find out what happens. And I feel like he'll still play through it regardless. We only got three preseason games left. Sit him down. Sit LeBron. Sit everybody. But what I'm trying to say is, Lakers, Lakers fans out there, people listen to me. Um, Anthony Davis is upset and angry. He's going to prove a lot of people wrong this year, including LeBron James. But I just feel like Anthony Davis is going to be on a mission. You know what I mean? I just feel like he's going to be on a mission to prove everybody wrong. And I really think that Anthony Davis is going to have the mindset to develop a killer's mentality. I know he's a great, talented big man. You know what I mean? Shoot the three, pick and pop, post up, fade away. His defense is really good on pick and rolls. He's an underrated passer. So I would not be surprised if he averaged 27 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists next season. Or actually in 10 days. Because the Lakers season starts in 10 days versus the LA Clippers. But that's a different topic for a different day. What I'm trying to say is Anthony Davis is very underrated at passing. And people don't understand he's a great passer. When you double team him, Kuzma's going to cut. Ronald going to cut. Danny Green going to cut. Lance, not Lance. JaVale McGee going to cut. Because sometimes JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis are playing. Um, JaVale McGee's playing center. Anthony Davis playing power forward. And if you double team AD, JaVale McGee might cut. You throw it to him, and then at the end, if they double team Javon McGee, Javon McGee's gonna throw it to the open shooter. So what I'm saying is, Anthony Davis is a very underrated passer, and his defense is one of the best in the NBA. He can switch all positions, pick a roll, block shots, put backs. That's what I like about his game: his ability to get rebounds, get assists, block shots, be intense, have the intensity every game. You know what I mean? He just uh, he's very, 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 very. Great at what he does. Love his game. And if you ask me, do I think he'll be the MVP candidate? I think he'll be in the running of it. I agree. I said that earlier on this podcast that I think he will be an improved player with LeBron on the team. Because Anthony Davis and LeBron James are clicking already. And people on ESPN were talking about it ain't going to work. Jack, Jackie McMullen was talking about, oh, they're going to have chemistry issues. Doesn't look like it to me. The, the Lakers, AD and LeBron's pick and roll is... I know we're one and one and one right now preseason, but what I'm just saying is that pick and roll. How are you gonna stop that pick and roll? That pick and roll with LeBron, AD, like you gotta pick your poison. You know what I mean? You let LeBron score, AD score. Because if you try to double team LeBron, AD's gonna cut, Kuzma's gonna cut. So what I'm trying to say is, I just feel like the pick and roll with AD and LeBron is, is gonna be unstoppable when they get the clicking, when they get it right down. I know them two are clicking so far, but sometimes there's gonna be lapses where. Dang, I should have passed that passed that too early. Okay, we'll fix it. So once they get on a good chemistry level, they are right now, but if they can have that little, good little chemistry right here, it's all good. But Anthony Davis um, is going to prove that he's not injury prone. He's not. He's gonna. He's going to prove that he's not. He's gonna play all the season. He's gonna play all eighty two games. You know what I mean, he's put it put in the work in the off season. His body looks better, different. He's more, more. He's skinnier, but with more muscle. I really like what he did in the off season, working on his handling, working on his post ups, his threes. Cause he's he's gonna shoot a lot of threes this year. That pick and pop, like I'm saying, the pick and pop with him and LeBron, easy. Then LeBron James could do a pick and pop as well. So what I'm saying is Anthony Davis can be an MVP candidate, and he's gonna be in the running. And Lakers are gonna be on one of the best teams in the league. Now let's switch over to Kuzma, Kyle Kuzma. Will he come off the bench or will he start? And how how is he, let's say he gets to the 
bench, right? Second unit, how is he going to impact the second unit? I think he'll um, impact it well. His scoring ability, his rebounding, his defense, his hustle, grit, and grind. I just love his game. He has that Kobe Bryant mindset. Like, he ain't scared of the big moments. He'll take that shot if he needs to. And his energy will come off really strong because who knows who will start a point guard, Avery Bradley or Rondo. And if we put Rondo in the second unit, it will be Rondo, Danny Green, Kyle Kuzma, um, what's his name? I forgot we picked him up. I forgot his name. Um, what's his name? Second unit. D Dwight Howard at center. I mean, Dwight Power Forward, excuse me, because you could put Dwight Howard at Power Forward, too, if you need to, and put um, JaVale McGee at center. You, you, can not, you can go small with the second. You can have JaVale McGee, you can, JaVale McGee out there. Second, if you wanted to, you can have Dwight Howard, Kuzma, Avery Bradley, and Rondo. With that second unit, because there may be a situation where Dwight Howard has to play power forward or Kuzma has to play power forward. What I'm trying to say is that the starting five I just mentioned, that's a great defensive starting lineup. And that the Lakers' offense is going to run through Kuzma in the second unit. That's what I think. But if he, how is he going to impact the second unit? He's going to impact it tremendously. Love his game. Love his ability to get to the rim. And just he's just a great athlete. He's going to prove a lot of people wrong this year because people are doubting him already. And he's not going to be the third scorer. He's not going to do this or that. He listens. Yeah, like I said earlier, his mindset is like Kobe. So he don't, he, he's not scared. He's not scared. He, he's just not. So, at the end of the day, I just feel like Kuzma is going to be a bright spot for a second unit. And his, I feel like his ability to score is going to be the main point why we're going to bring him to the second unit. Because I, at the end of the day, I think Danny Green and Avery Bradley are going to start. And I think Rondo and Kuzma come off the bench. Um, I just feel like um, that Kuzma is going to come off the bench. It just makes sense at the end of the day. Um, real quick, I wanna I I've been out. Of, I wanna talk about. I forgot to mention this in the podcast. An opening statement. Um, the last two preseason games. My concern is too many wide open three pointers. We're giving up too much. Too many open threes. We're giving up too many offensive rebounds. Too many putbacks. Limit those. Figure it out now. Fix it and adjust it during the season. Because if you give up a lot of open threes. It's going to be a long game, long season in the sense of you can't give up open threes all the time. you got to continue to drive your, let them drive. And that, like, if they about to shoot the three, close out and have them drive because you got Dwight Howard or Anthony Davis or JaVale McGee back there. So if you get beat, oh, well, they're going to be there to save you. So that that's my main concerns going into the season so far. I should have brought this up on the park. Like, I should have did this in the opening thing but I had to I just came to my mind right now. So my main concerns are limit three pointer opportunities for the other team, box out and get offensive rebounds and play defense. You're playing defense is playing okay, but too many threes giving up too many threes in the in the preseason. Now let's dive into what team is gonna be a sleeper in the Easter conference. I'm gonna give you my top three teams. Indiana Pacers, I'm gonna tell you why. Indiana Pacers have Victor Oladipo coming back they picked up Malcolm Brogdon um, from Milwaukee, and they got Miles Turner, and uh, it's a bonus. He's very good. He's improved his game. Watched a couple of his preseason games on NBA TV. He he's, looks like he's uh, improved on his weight, and his jumpers has his jumper has improved tremendously. And Nate McMillan is a great, great, great coach, underrated coach, very underrated coach. So what I'm trying to say is Nate McMillan's an underrated coach. Indiana's underrated, so don't sleep on them. Number two, I'm going to go with Orlando. Orlando's a sleeper. They got um, Vucevic back. They re-signed him to a big contract. Um, Aaron Gordon is a very talented player. Fournier is a very talented player. And they got a coach over there, and, uh, Steve Clifford, who's going to bring those guys together. They're going to compete at the highest level. And I feel like they're going to be in the 6-7 to seven range next season. And my number three sleeper... Um, in the East, I'm going to go with the Brooklyn Nets. Even though they don't have KD, they still got Kyrie. They still got um, Dinwiddie. They still got Jared Allen. They still got a group of guys that compete at the highest level. The coach over there is great, but Kyrie Irving is going to have to take this team to the next level. So I feel like they're going to be 
a sleeper next season, in my opinion, because everybody's sleeping on Kyrie, everybody's sleeping on Spencer Dibbity, everybody's sleeping on Jared Allen. So what I'm trying to say is this team, this next team is going to be in the three to six range for next season. And now we got to talk about what team, what challenge, what what challenges, what team is going to challenge the Lakers this season? I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> the LA Clippers. You know why? Because they got Kawhi Leonard over there. They got Paul George, Lou Williams. They got Montrezl Hill. It's going to be a challenge. I know it's not it, it, us fans. Like, oh, we're going to blow them out by 40. Clipper Darrow's talking his mess. And he's saying that it's going to be, the Clippers are going to beat us. They ain't going to beat us. It's going to be a competitive matchup. At the end of the day, I feel like the Lakers have a better team because a lot of people think that the Clippers have a better team. The only reason that people are picking the Clippers is because they're basing that off of what happened last season with Lou Williams having a great six-man of the year season, Montrez Harold, Zubak, and all those Montrez Harold, like a group of guys that compete at the highest level. But I just don't think that Clippers, they are going to be a challenge, but I just feel like who who... On the Clippers, who's going to stop AD in the post? Who's going to stop LeBron James? Oh, Kawhi Leonard. Okay. You double team LeBron. Kuzma's going to cut. Danny Green's going to cut. Um, Dwight Howard's going to cut. Avery Bradley's going to cut. So it's just like, come on now. I don't get why people think that the Clip people. I don't know why people on Twitter are talking about Clippers are going to be better than Lakers. They got better roster. Okay. Put Clippers starting five versus Lakers. And Twitter, go on my Insta, not my Instagram, go on my Twitter, tweet me. Who do you think is going to win in the seven-game series, Clippers or Lakers? And Or leave them in the comment section down below. But I just feel like the Lakers have a better team overall. They got AD, JaVale McGee, Danny Green, um, Avery Bradley. They got guys that can be there when they need them the most in crunch time situations. Like, let's say Avery Bradley could guard, Avery Bradley could guard Paul George easy. Paul George is a great Talent is a great score, but I think Avery Bradley can give him a run for his money. I really think so, man. Because a lot of people think that Avery Bradley is overrated. No, he's underrated. He's an underrated scorer. He can play defense. Hustle great. Right. He played Steph and Curry full court. Danny Green can play defense on Kawhi. He did it, did it in practice when they're on the team together. And he did it when he was on the Spurs in practice as well. So what I'm trying to say is Danny Green is an underrated defender and an underrated scorer. I just love love their game. Love this team's hustle, grit, and grind. And if you really think about it, the Clippers don't have a deep, 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 deep bench as morally people are saying. You know why they're saying that? Because Lou Williams had a good season. Montrose Hill, those are the two players that they have off the bench. And they, I do they got more Harkless. But really, more Harkless is a talented player, but I don't think he's that good to me. He's talented, can shoot the three, play defense. But I don't think he's like, oh, we need to stop him. Just, you know what I mean? Just let him do his thing. And my second team that I think is going to have a challenge for the Lakers, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Houston. Because for some odd reason, I just feel like James Harden and Russell Westbrook always play well against the Lakers. For some odd reason, they always play well. They always gear up for us. So I feel like them two are going to, they're going to be hard to stop in a sense, in my opinion. If Russell Westbrook can get it going with James Harden, P.J. Tucker, um, Jared Green, Eric Gordon, Clint Capella, and you get on the streak, and then Houston gets hot from three, it's going to be a long game. But I just feel like that's those two teams are going to be our toughest matchup during the season. Clippers, Rockets, and yeah, man, I'm going to end this Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast show. Follow me on Twitter, Big Baby Jonathan. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel, Big Baby Jonathan. And then when you do subscribe, leave a like, share it, leave a comment in the comment section, and let me know what you think of the podcast. And fo- go like my Facebook page, the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show, and go subscribe. Excuse me, go to my Instagram, Big Baby Jonathan underscore. Go follow me on there, and if you want to be a part of the podcast, just go to my Anchor app and leave a like, and let me know what you think, and we can set up a time and date for you to be on my podcast. And until then, everybody have a blessed, blessed day. Peace out, go Lakers. <laughs>